I'd forgive you for thinking that Huddersfield weren't a massive top level elite English football club, but come the end of this video, I hope that the people watching this will have a newfound respect for Huddersfield and their incredible achievements. Huddersfield have only spent two years in England's top flight since the 1970s. You may remember their short stint under David Wagner in uh, around 2017 to 2019 when they had the likes of Hogg and Billing and Moy, for instance. Currently in the championship though, the Terriers, as they're also known, hold one of English football's most incredible records. Actually, I didn't realise this was a stadium that you could see into so well. The new Huddersfield ground. Wow, look at that. Huddersfield were the first club in England to win three consecutive top tier titles. They were also the second club after Blackpool to have won all three divisional playoffs. They also have an FA Cup to their name. Ray Wilson, Dennis Law, Bill Shankly, Herbert Chapman are some of the massive names to have been associated with Huddersfield. The story of this football club is actually insane. Please do remember to hit that like button and subscribe if you're new. I hope you enjoy this video. We're going to be checking out their old home as well. I think there's a plaque. So Someone left a comment about it the other day, so a huge thank you to him for doing so. Here is the new stadium. Let's go check it out. And actually here, as you can see, right next to the club shop, look, the record of Huddersfield Town is a truly marvellous one. That's Herbert Chapman, who is also an Arsenal legend. We will be getting into all of this in more detail as the video goes on, but just look at some of the trophies Huddersfield have won. And even here, look, some of the old legends who have played here, as well as this thrice champions the first team to have won the english first top division three times in a row that now is kind of the what the championship trophy looks like but it was what the efl or the top division in england once looked like as well before the premier league came along of course and there's more history of huddersfield on the walls here of the uh, of the club shop this is incredible i love to see this And I do have a lot to tell you about the history of Huddersfield as well as going to their old ground location as well, which like I just mentioned has a plaque there, but I'm just gonna see in the main reception if there's any chance I can look around the club today. Great, thanks, I will do. Cheers, see you later, all the best, bye. Right, and as you may have just heard, I'm not sure how much of that I um, actually recorded or would have shown you, but um, yeah, couldn't show me around today, sadly. Got an email address. I will email um, just to see if they'll let me back again one day. I'd love to do like an interview with someone here at Huddersfield, but yeah, just check this out. As you can see, their new ground, extremely modern compared to obviously what their old one would have looked like and as you could also see from some of the um some of the branding around here it is also home to the huddersfield giants which says this is the birthplace of rugby league of 1895. just a 10 minute walk from the new stadium is their old stadium they have quite a big rivalry with leeds united as do all the clubs around here i feel like leeds are the most hated club in this entire area of england but um yeah their old stadium was called Leeds Road because of its location on, well, you know, Leeds Road. So their, bit, their old stadium was named after one of their biggest rivals, but let's go check it out just now. I've been to old stadium locations that are now bingo halls, Sainsbury's, blocks of flats, any others, I'm not too sure, but I don't think I've ever had one that's a B&Q before. And we are now looking for a center circle here, right next to B&Q. I have heard that it is here somewhere. Again, a huge thank you to uh, the person who left a comment about this place. Oh, we're looking for a needle in a haystack here. Um, this might be a strange question. Is there, so I've heard that there's a plaque somewhere out in the car park of the Huddersfield Town uh, scene. Perfect, you know, you know. I've just been walking around for like 10 minutes trying to find it, so. Have you got Pokemon Go by any chance? I don't have Pokemon Go, no, without help in finding it. Yes. Really? Yeah, because it's, it's one of the poker stops, so. Oh, right, okay. It, believe it or not, it's 
possibly under a car, but it is right. literally in the middle of the car park. It's kind of in line with beds and some beds. Oh, so, so somewhere in, okay, outside, right, yeah. Just kind of walk in the middle. Oh, I thought it was closer to being cute. Okay, so somewhere near Benson's, I think it might be a car parking spot, which is a shame. It'd be just my luck that I come here and someone's parked on it, just like when I went to visit the Brian Clough statue and had a temporary fence around it. But fair play to the, uh, to the lady in B&Q. She knew it was here. She knew where it was, roughly. Oh, have we found it? Is this it? Let's come, no, that's not it. That ain't it. Oh, me no, is it? That is it. Oh, that's so unassuming. Right, here we go. Where does it start? Where does it start? This plaque marks the centre spot of Huddersfield Town AFC Leeds Road Ground 1908 to 1994. Look at that. Right next to Dreams. That's such a shame. Look, you can see a little football pitch on there. Try and get a bit of the mud off. I'm just kind of making it a bit worse, which is a real shame. But apparently, I've read online this has been stolen a few times. It's not on there amazingly well, but this is the old center circle of Huddersfield's old amazing ground, Leeds Road. Look at that. I've got to be probably the only person ever who's just come here to look at this and hasn't gone away with some new pillows or a fan or some carpet. Yeah, there it is. I've come all the way to Huddersfield to see this. Just look at Huddersfield's league finishes over time. As you can see, they've been as low as the fourth tier, but mainly second and third tiers in sort of modern times. In between the wars though, just look at that. The amount of time spent at the top of English football though for Huddersfield is largely down to one man. I've seen and spoken about the Herbert Chapman statue, which is outside the Emirates Arsenal Stadium in my videos before. Maybe best known as being the first man to bring the top tier title to Arsenal. There is a statue that immortalizes this great footballing legend outside of the Emirates for all to see. Amazingly though he actually used to play for Tottenham so I bet a lot of Arsenal fans don't know that they have a statue outside their stadium of a former Tottenham player. <laughs> but in a nutshell he was a journeyman player from a big footballing family. He played for Spurs, Northampton, Sheffield United and Grimsby amongst others. He managed Northampton and a team called Leeds City who were the biggest team in Leeds prior to their folding in the late 90s teens I think it was around 1919 that they folded and through their folding I think came Leeds United but basically yes uh, Chapman managed Northampton then the biggest team in Leeds at the time which wasn't actually Leeds United but Leeds City but in 1921 he joined Huddersfield in his first full season in charge he won the FA Cup beating Preston at Chelsea's Stamford Bridge in 1922 in 1924 he won Huddersfield their first league title with some incredible defensive displays and a counter-attacking style that had rarely been seen before his time in 1925 they defended their league title and became the first team to go through an entire season without conceding more than two goals in any given match he improved Huddersfield's squad ready for another title push when he saw an advert in the paper for the Arsenal job. They were in a spot above the season before where Arsenal fighting off relegation, but with uh, bigger crowds and a bigger wage ultimately for Herbert Chapman, he swapped the North of England for the North of London. Arsenal finished second in Chapman's first season there. Quite impressive how he took them from relegation to second, but who finished first? Well, it was Huddersfield of course, under now the stewardship of Cecil Potter. Despite joining Arsenal in 1925 and having a relatively um, successful first season finishing second, it wouldn't be until the 1930s that he actually won them their first league titles as a club, but he still did an incredible job there. After a scouting trip, he uh, reportedly had a cold at the age of just 55. When the cold started to get progressively worse, he eventually died of pneumonia really suddenly. I don't think anyone was expecting it. Like I say, he was scouting players for Arsenal, I believe, at the time, had been to a game somewhere in the country, had developed a cold. That cold eventually turned into pneumonia, and he sadly died at the age of just 55. So post Chapman and the golden years of the club, they actually did reach a couple of FA Cup finals, one of which they actually lost 
against Chapman's Arsenal. They also lost in the 1938 FA Cup final against Preston, and that was the first ever FA Cup final to be broadcast on live TV. They were relegated for the first time, though, in the early 1950s. Bill Shankly had a few managerial roles before joining Huddersfield. He then went on to manage Liverpool, of course. Dennis Law started his playing career here, and he even got sold to Man City for a British transfer record of £55,000. This financed floodlights at Leeds Road, which became known as the Dennis Law Lights. They spent the majority of their um, life bouncing around England's lower tiers, but in the late 60s, they adopted the nickname the Terriers. It's a very apt nickname, the Terriers, and was introduced in the 1969-70 season by promotions manager Bill Brook, acknowledging the Terrier-like qualities of fitness and tenacity of Ian Greaves' young side. The first Yorkshire Terrier to be registered with the Kennel Club in the 1880s was named Huddersfield Ben. So yeah, they wanted to name the club after something that was tenacious and hard-working, a little bit like a little Terrier, but also something that links to the area. And the first ever Yorkshire Terrier that was... Um, officially registered with the kennel club was from Huddersfield. Regular viewers will also know how much I love to get dogs on the vlogs. Didn't even realize that rhyme till then. And to get one on now as part of a football badge is just everything. And if you can't get into the stadium, why not have a coffee in the Legends Bar? And just look at this, that looks a bit like Dennis Law. I could be making an idiot of myself there. Um, I'm not quite sure who a lot of these players are, but I'm sure people will tell me. But look, here it says the cow shed. That presumably is the old Leeds Road Stadium. But now we are in part of the John Smith Stadium. And Huddersfield have been here since 1994. The capacity is over 24,000. And not only do they have a really cool looking stadium from the outside, but you can also see from the inside. And they also have this cafe here. So if you can't get in like I couldn't today, at least you can get caffeinated instead. Thank you. Cheers. See you later. Remember the next time you're putting on an ACA or your team draws Huddersfield in one of the cups, that this club were indeed, once upon a time, the most feared team in the country. From record-breaking title-winning teams to Bill Shankly to Herbert Chapman to Dennis Law and receiving the highest transfer fee a British team had ever received. That is what Huddersfield were all about. They shouldn't be in the championship or in League One or languishing in these divisions. They should be back up competing for titles and where they belong. I hope you've enjoyed this video and it has shed some light on what a massive club Huddersfield truly are. If you could remember to hit that like button that would be amazing and subscribe if you're new for loads more football videos. Look what a beautiful day it is. The weather in 2022 so far has been unbelievable. And if you don't subscribe, it's only gonna get worse. That's what I've heard. Thank you so much for watching. I'll leave some videos on screen. Please do click on one to carry on watching. Thank you very much. And I'll see you in the next one.